Insight. Let's go to our featured guest of the morning. He's Alan Small, Senior Investment Advisor at the Alan Small Financial Group, IA Private. Well, thanks for coming here. Always good to have you with us. Thank you. What is your view of these broader markets? Uh, in some notes that you've shared with us, you go through the uh, the price earnings calculation. Uh, the target uh, many market watchers believe on the S and P 500 is a little bit south of where it is right now. Yeah, you know, when you look at the multiple, you know, usually around 17, 18 times for the S and P, a lot of uh, I guess individual investors are estimating about maybe as much as 220 in terms of earnings. Uh, that gets you somewhere around 4,000 on the S&P. We're well over 4,100. So a lot of analysts feel that there's not much growth here, that we're at best fairly valued, and many think overvalued, and that there'll be some sort of correction as we get further on into earnings season, where we learn that corporations or businesses aren't doing as well. And also a lot of them are predicting that things are slowing, the continued slowness. Everyone seems to think inflation's falling, business is slowing, except for the Fed. And unfortunately, we're going to hear, and I say unfortunately, we're going to hear from a bunch of them over the next uh, 24 hours or so. I got to believe that they're going to talk about raising rates at least one more time. And uh, I think the market's priced that in, however. I think it's a matter of now, is it one and done? Or could there be a second one in June or beyond? So how I think that's... How likely do you think that is? Uh, I mean, you, you all... We also know that inflate, uh, ma many uh, economists say that uh, a central bank may be finished its work when the rate of inflation is below the prevailing benchmark interest rate. That's where we are now in Canada. Inflation now stands at 4.3%, uh, and we're pretty close to that in the U.S. Exactly. And one more, uh, one more increase, you're looking at a four, uh, five, five and a quarter. Their inflation rate's 5%. So, yeah, you know, there's every reason to stop raising rates. I'm hopeful that uh, May will be the last increase. And if so, I think this market can actually rally based on that. And I think some of the more interest rate sensitive areas of the market, such as tech, will probably get a boost at that point. But it all, I guess, remains to be seen what the Fed is going to do. What do investors do if the markets continue to trade sideways? How can, how can they make money? Well, I think overall you look for trends in the market, right? I think you're looking for areas of the market, pockets of the market that can still do well. You know, stock market is a market of stocks. Not everything goes up. If the overall market is trending lower, you still can find strength. Look for dividend pairs. Look for those areas of the market that are trending. AI, for example, artificial intelligence, everything that goes along with that cloud or other areas of the market such as banks you know we just received some i think some pretty good results from major u.s money center banks mm -hmm. citigroup wells fargo bank of america some of these names i think are worth taking a look at bank of america for example down almost 40 percent from just maybe a year and a half ago so these are names that i think bank of america again had great earnings uh, actually brought down their loan loss provisions you know i think these are names that you could actually take a, a look at and perhaps even overweight going forward. What about the uh, the tech stocks? The Nasdaq Composite is up some 15% or so, so far this year. Can that continue? I think so. I think so. But they're going to need to see these interest rate hikes come to an end. You know, a lot of people talk about cuts in interest rates. I'm not so sure you're going to see that, but I don't think the market needs that. I think they just need that pause. And then you'll see names like Amazon, Google, or Alphabet, Microsoft, although Microsoft has had a great year so far. But I think you're going to see some of the chip makers continue to rise. I think these interest rate uh, hikes is kind of having a, a cloud over the tech space. Once you get a pause in rates, I think the clouds can part and I think some of these names will move higher. You mentioned dividend payers. Uh, they are very interest rate sensitive, of course, because the market always compares the dividend yield of a uh, equity to the uh, risk-free uh, return on a, uh, on a government bond. How will dividend payers react, do you think, if there's a clear sense in the marketplace that the Fed is finished? Right, so I, I think also think it depends on which dividend pair you're looking at. Is it a, just a, you know, one that you're gonna get that dividend and not much growth? Or is it a name that you're going to get growth and income from? And I lean more towards the growth and income side of things. So there are many names that we know of. You know, BCE pays a great dividend, but hasn't really seen much, uh, you know, uh, share appreciation. Enbridge trades between $50 and $60 a share. Great dividend. Will you get a lot of growth? Probably not. But there are names like our banks, for example. When was the last time we saw TD Bank trading in the high 70s? Mm -hmm. It has since gone up and above 80 again. But again, you're looking at multiples we've seen on our banks and U.S. banks that we haven't seen in quite some time. So I think you can get some good growth and income from some of those names. That's Alice.